An unbelievable fact about Jordan has now come to light. That indicates our previous perceptions of Jordan were merely delusory. Thus, based on Jordan's recent discoveries, can we conclude that it is far from pure and evil? If so, what do Israelis have to say about this? Stay with us till the end as we delve deeper into today's video. If you know a great deal about Christianity and Judaism, you've probably heard about the Jordan River, also referred to as the Yardin River. The Jordan River plays a significant role in multiple biblical stories. The area has also altered significantly throughout time due to human involvement. The Jordan River in the Middle East is utilized for a variety of reasons. They include agricultural irrigation, baptisms, and normal household use. After leaving Lake Tiberias, descending farther below sea level and meandering further, the Jordan River reaches the Dead Sea. The Jordan River is approximately 1,385 feet below sea level as it empties into the Dead Sea. All Jordan River riparians have relied heavily on the river for water. Until just after the year 2000, the water of the Jordan River was Israel's largest water supply. Since then, desalinated Mediterranean seawater has replaced it. 1964 marked the completion of Israel's National Water Carrier, which reroutes water to the country's southern desert and coastal lowlands. Jordan is required to get 50 million cubic meters of water from the river under the terms of a peace accord signed with Israel in 1994. The National Water Carrier decreased the Jordan River's flow significantly. This water is intended to compensate Jordan for this loss. In addition, the Jordan River has profound religious importance. The place where Jesus of Nazareth was baptized and where the Jews crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land. Since then, this water has been used to baptize the successors of many Christian royal houses. The water flow in the Jordan River has decreased significantly. It previously flowed annually at a rate of 1.3 billion cubic meters. As of 2010, the flow has decreased to around 2% of its initial volume. The Jordan River annually contributes only 20 to 30 million cubic meters of water to the Dead Sea. Some now refer to it as a creek as opposed to a river. The Jordan River is moreover considerably polluted. A tiny portion of the Jordan River immediately south of Lake Tiberias has been preserved for local tourists and baptisms. Yet the river's most contaminated section is the extended stretch downstream of this area. The alteration of the Jordan River is a result of human activities. They have both reduced the river by removing its water and contaminated it by allowing brackish water and sewage to enter. According to environmentalists, restoring this river to its former splendor may take decades. But what has recently come to light is surprising and claims that the river is not holy. On the west bank of the Jordan River in the Palestinian territories lies a region known as Khazar el Yahud, which according to Jewish tradition is the location of the baptism of Jesus. In 2011, the public was given access to the updated version of the site which featured a new deck and upgraded infrastructure for tourists. During that year, there were 109,559 tourists from other countries stopped. Since then, the number of guests has skyrocketed, reaching a total of 567,006 in the year 2017. Gidon Bromberg, the Israeli director of EcoPeace Middle East, an Israeli-Jordanian-Palestinian environmental organization, noted that the quality of the water is anything from holy in nature. Despite the fact that pilgrims travel to the area for the purpose of performing a cleansing rite, the water quality in the lower Jordan River is a mixture of untreated and partially treated sewage, agricultural runoff, fish pond waste, and saline waters from springs to lower the salinity of the Sea of Galilee. The water levels in the Jordan River are currently only a small percentage of what they used to be, as a direct result of a number of factors including poor water management, climate change, and the illegal dumping of sewage. There is no longer any flow of water, and as a result, there are less than 20 feet of sludge between the Jordanian soldiers who are protecting one side of the site and Israeli forces who are patrolling the site's western bank. A foul odor can be detected along the riverbank. This is due to the presence of pollution as well as germs such as E. coli. The deck where the pilgrims are getting ready for their baptism is surrounded by what is left of the river, and black flies buzz over them. Officials from both the Israeli and Jordanian governments are aware of the situation. 
On the west side of the river, there is a small sign near the parking lot that says, among other things, the water isn't drinkable. This is the only sign that the water might not be safe for drinking. Bromberg made the observation that this demonstrates how economic interests take precedence over public health. According to Jewish tradition, Khazar el Yahud is the site where ancient Israelites entered the Holy Land, as described in the book of Joshua. It is also believed to be the location where the prophet Elijah ascended to heaven, as described in the book of 2 Kings. The site of baptism is in a peculiar geopolitical position. Israel has full control over this portion of the West Bank, while Jericho, one of the largest cities in the Palestinian territory, is the closest major metropolis. Khazar el Yahud is overseen by an Israeli government agency, the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, whose duties include water sanitation inspections, site cleaning, and security. On the Israeli side, the water is examined every two months in accordance with the Ministry of Health's rules. And according to Yaniv Cohen, spokesman for the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, the quality of the water permits baptism. Both Jordan and Israel conform to certain water quality regulations. Both samples are tested for fecal coliform, a pathogen found in human and animal feces. The Jordanian standard in 1995 was 1,000 fecal coliform units per 100 milliliters of water. Israeli guidelines in 2002, in comparison, required 200 fecal coliform units per 100 milliliters of water. Kafir noted that there is no particular fecal coliform concentration at which the facility is closed owing to health concerns, as it depends on other circumstances, such as sewage dumps further up the river and rainfall. If there is a flood of sewage dumped into the river, the number could rise to at least 700 to 1,500, he warned. By the end of January, the count reached 650 and the site was closed for the day. Nonetheless, he stated that there are times when the number is higher and the site remains open. In October 2009, following an extended period of regional drought, the water near the site of the baptism was detected to contain 750 fecal coliform units per 100 milliliters of water which was significantly higher than Israeli norms, but lower than Jordanian ones. According to a 2010 report by Ecopeace, which was co-researched by Israeli, Jordanian, and Palestinian scientists, fecal coliform levels in the lower Jordan River indicate that the area is not suitable for recreation, fishing, or boating, according to the standards of the Israeli National Parks Authority. There is no magical barrier in the river, so if one country maintains a lower quality, it will permeate the entire water supply. Israel and Jordan matched their Jordan River water quality regulations in 2015 to 200 fecal coliform units per 100 milliliters. During a November 2018 visit, Weather.com spotted a woman from the Parks Authority collecting water samples for this evaluation. Every six to eight weeks, someone checks the water according to her. When questioned about the destination, she acknowledged that she did not know and that she simply placed the samples in a conveyance. She was unaware of what was in the water or whether it was dangerous. During the same visit, a reporter from Weather.com witnessed at least three pilgrims swallowing water during their baptism. Bromberg noted that the presence of feculent coliform in the river does not constitute a matter of life and death. No one will die, yet waterborne infections with symptoms such as nausea and gastrointestinal problems can occur. There are no numbers reflecting the frequency of these occurrences. According to Bromberg, we don't know the level of disease because the pilgrims leave the location days later. The erosion of the river has been attributed to climate change and 15 years of record-breaking drought, according to Israeli and Jordanian government officials. However, Bromberg and other researchers in the field claim that this is not the case. Climatic change has had an impact on the rehabilitation efforts of the river. The river's depletion is caused by a combination of reasons, including dams, the diversion of water to tributaries for agricultural use, and drought. The Ministry of Environmental Protection believes that 95% of the diverted water is utilized for home and agricultural purposes in Jordan, Syria, and Israel. A significant amount of the damage has deep roots in government indifference. On the current condition of the river and the adjacent Jordan Valley, Bromberg stated, this is not global climate change. It is authorized by the government to exploit our valuable resources. Now let us take a look at recent plans for the Jordan River by the government. Slowly, steadily, and mostly under the radar, an 11-kilometer, 
stretch of the Jordan River is being turned into swimmable water. It is not yet pollution-free, that will have to wait another three years or so. However, parts of its banks are being spruced up, planted, and reconstructed, and a pedestrian and cycling trail now runs along much of its western side, from the Rob Roy canoeing attraction just southwest of the Sea of Galilee, southward to the settlement of Menahemia. Small bridges connect islands, and a high embankment has been flattened to allow for the formation of water inlets and land that slopes gently down to the water's edge. Salt-tolerant trees are being planted to provide shade, and rocks have been placed in the water to make ripples and change the speed of the flow, which will give animals and birds living along the river different places to live. The area is open to the public, but when this reporter went there during the week, there was only one fisherman and two campers to be seen. The Jordan Valley, which is a part of the great Syrian-African Rift Valley, was a major route for early humans moving between Africa, Europe, and Asia. It is still a major route for animals, especially birds, moving between Africa, Europe, and Asia. Many stories and traditions that are important to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam take place along the river and along its banks. But south of the Sea of Galilee, where the river runs about 128 kilometers or 80 miles, to the Dead Sea, Israel, Syria, and Jordan have taken most of the water for human use, leaving only a trickle. The area between the Degania Dam at the southern end of the Sea of Galilee and the Alumat Dam, which is about 1.2 miles away, is clean. Here is where the Yardenite baptism site is, and right now they are making it bigger. Yet there's a different narrative to the south of the Alumat Dam, a massive earthen dam. For many years, the water between this dam and where the Jordan and Yarmouk rivers meet, just southeast of Menahemia, near Naharayim, was dirty, smelly, and inaccessible. At the beginning of the 20th century, the river from the Degania Dam to Nahariyam was dug out and made narrower to look like a canal. The goal was to speed up the flow of water for Pinchas Rutenberg's hydroelectric power project at Nahariyam, which ran from 1932 to 1948. The amount of water that used to flow out of the Sea of Galilee has dropped to between 10 and 20 million cubic meters per year, according to the Water Authority. Before Israel dammed the flow in the 1960s, the amount of water flowing out of the Sea of Galilee rose to 1.2 billion cubic meters. South of the Alamot Dam, the river has been used for a long time as a place to dump the trash, sewage, and salty water. This is made worse by the runoff from agricultural chemicals and fish farms. In the 1960s, the State of Israel built the so-called Salty Carrier to keep salt water from getting into the freshwater Sea of Galilee, which is Israel's emergency source of drinking water. This was a deep channel with high earthen walls on either side. It was about 13.7 miles west of the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. Around 13 years ago, a pipe was put in place of this open-air carrier, but about 25 million cubic meters of salty water still flow into the river south of the Alamot Dam every year. Raw sewage from the cities of Tiberias and Safed and other Galilee towns was also dumped into the salty carrier to make things even worse. When a sewage treatment plant was built right across from the Alamot Dam in 2015, this stopped. It was made better last year so that it could give the best care. The Water Authority says that about 4 million cubic meters of treated sewage still flow into the river every year. If everything goes as planned, a desalination plant to treat the salt water will be built and start working in about three years, near where the Jordan River meets the Yavanil Stream, across from Kibbutz de Ganiabet. The desalinated water will be sent to commercial fish ponds in the nearby Emek Hamayanot Valley of Springs area. Around 10 million cubic meters of water will be sent to a point south of Menahemia every year. In the meantime, all of the cleaned wastewater will be piped to farmers to water their crops. Once these pollutants stop going into the river, at least 50 mcm per year more clean water from the Sea of Galilee will flow into the river. The Kinneret Drainage and Streams Authority has been working on a part of a government project to widen parts of the river and restore the area's natural look for the past 12 years. The goal is to bring in a lot more tourists and visitors and to fix ecosystems that have been in bad shape for decades. The Salty Carrier's eastern embankment was flattened to provide a place for small bays and lawn areas, and tens of thousands of tons of accumulated silt from salt and sewage were removed. 
the Israel Nature and Parks Authority are currently setting up a partnership with the Authority and the Jordan Valley Regional Council to share the cost of maintenance until the INPA finishes the paperwork needed to make the section between the two dams a national park and the rest down to Menahemia, a nature reserve. According to an INPA spokesman, the park and reserve could be designated this year, but the decision is not contingent on the organization. She also said that there were no plans to charge people to get into either one. When Ilus saw empty bottles and other trash on a rock by the river, he said that the drainage authority didn't have the right tools to pick up trash and that the INPA would give the area a mother and father to take care of it properly. One of the archaeological sites along the river that will be turned into a tourist attraction is Tel Obeda, a mound near Kibbutz Beit Zera that doesn't look like much but has a very interesting history. Archaeologists have found evidence of one of the earliest times Homo erectus left, Africa. They did this by digging through about 60 layers of soil, the oldest of which date back 1.5 million years. The part of the river that is being fixed up ends just before the Adama Dam, where the water is sharply sent east towards the Rutenberg Hydroelectric Dam by cement walls. Along the tall cement wall, the drainage authority has built a narrow path for otters to use. The Kinneret Drainage and Streams Authority is in charge of planning and doing the work. The Environmental Protection and Tourism Ministries, the Israel Lands Authority, the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, the KKLJNF Jewish National Fund, and the local authorities have all given their approval. The repairs and extra clean water are only for this part of the river, where both sides are in Israel. South of where the Jordan and Yarmouk rivers meet, the waterway marks the border between Jordan and Israel. Each country controls one side of the river. In November, Israel and Jordan signed a document saying they wanted to work together to fix up and develop this part of the river. This section ends when the river flows into the partially Palestinian-controlled West Bank on its way to the Dead Sea. Geopolitical changes can make it hard to predict when these kinds of agreements will be put into place. And while organizations such as Ecopeace and the Arava Institute for Environmental Studies are trying to get the Jordanians, Palestinians and Israelis on the same page, nothing is happening formally at present. The Israeli director of Ecopeace, Gidon Bromberg, said that the river was a story of death because we're in the desert, water is scarce and people need it. He went on to say, water is always a story of conflict. When the river is the border, letting fresh water flow into it means giving the enemy more power. But, he said, there wouldn't be much point for Israel to fix up the river's western bank as it flows through Jordan and the west bank as long as the water kept getting dirty from the cesspits on the other side that serves 700,000 Jordanians and 52,000 Palestinians who don't have access to a sewage network. Bromberg said that putting more water into the river, getting people in the area to work together to clean it up, and running it through something like a trilateral river commission, which already exists in other parts of the world, would make the region more resilient to water shortages caused by a growing population and climate change. He said that lack of water was one of the problems that started the Syrian civil war. Bromberg said, all of these advantages, geopolitics, ecology, tourism and climate, need to line up. He went on to say that even though India and Pakistan had bad feelings towards each other, they managed a part of the Indus River together. The border issue shouldn't stop us from moving water. Jordan already gets water from the Sea of Galilee, so you don't have to agree on where the borders are to reach a deal on water. So that was all about the video. Hope you find it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon for more updates like this. Thank you so much for watching our video today, and we will see you in our next video.